We were lucky enough to spend three months in Australia exploring the mountains, the oceans, and the wildlife. In this video, I'm gonna to try to give you a glimpse into what that was like. Australia is a massive country and we feel like we didn't even scratch the surface in the three months that we were there. But in the time we did spend there, we saw some amazing beauty and we would definitely go back. We think it would take about two years of continuous exploration here just to be able to say that you experienced Australia. My name is Aaron, this is Plan 3. If you'd like a free way to support the channel, Click the subscribe button and the blue bell icon so you always know when our next video is coming out. It's free, it just takes a second, and it helps a lot. We spent almost our entire three months in Queensland, with the exception of when we first flew into Australia after leaving Bali, Indonesia. We arrived in Perth, where we stayed for, I think it was around five days or a week, right around Christmas time. We grabbed an Airbnb right in town there, our Airbnb host was excellent, very friendly lady. She personally helped us arrange transportation so that we could get out and see some sights. We were able to enjoy several of the local city beaches there. And we also took a short drive into Yanchep National Park where we, for Canadians this is a big deal, where we were able to see koalas and kangaroos fairly close up. On other days we'd catch the public transit system, which we thought in Perth was excellent. We were able to get around the city very well uh, in a reasonable time frame. So we were able to visit some of the other beaches, say a pretty good distance from where we were staying uh, by catching the public transit. After a short stay in Perth, it was time to fly to Rockhampton where we were going to do a month long house sit. We stayed in her house and took care of her dogs and treated them like they were members of our family. So we had Chester, we had Bentley, and we had Hunter. In some of the uh, leisure time we had to have a good time and some fun, we would explore areas like Baga National Park and go for a walk through there, which was more like a hike slash rock scramble. But it was a beautiful park, as was Archer National Park, where again, you could go on a Pretty good hike through some very interesting to us landscape and uh, there was some excellent uh, wildlife in the form of birds at the top of this park which uh, I enjoyed. One of the funnest day tours uh, we did in the Rockhampton area had to have been the boat tour we took through the Keppel Islands. This is a picturesque uh, little group of islands with some excellent white sand beach and access to a vibrant reef where you can snorkel, scuba, free dive. Uh, you can hang around on a sunny beach and catch some rays, rip around in a boat. It was a great time. And we caught that boat tour to and from the town of Yapoon. Once we successfully wrapped up our house sit in Rockhampton, it was time for us to jump on an airplane, fly into Brisbane, and then back up into Townsville, where we stayed, I believe, about three weeks, if I remember right. And we actually rented a home in this case. It was about three blocks off Strand Park, and so this gave us an opportunity to walk to the beach. They have a nice little enclosed swimming area where Lori and I would give ourselves a reward after a long day's work on the computer and or it was so hot it was just nice to get in the water, which was refreshing after a day inside the house in the heat. The temperature was generally between about 32 and 35 this time of year in Townsville, which I guess would have been around February. Some of the things we enjoyed doing when we worked uh, on the computers working in Townsville, we would go to places like Alligator Creek where it was a nice freshwater swimming hole. Again, it was a great refreshing break from the heat. We enjoyed jumping around in those rocks and having some swims there. Picturesque little park, it was beautiful. Other times we'd get up first thing in the morning and go to say Queens Park in the middle of town to take in the views. Later on that day we jumped on the ferry over to Magnetic Island and uh, did a walk up into the highest points of Magnetic Island. So pro tip, do it exactly like we didn't do it. 
So we did it at the height of the day. It was around 34, 35 again in the blazing sun. Here we are hiking up this mountain, which turned out awesome. It was beautiful, but if I could do it again, I would have done it earlier in the morning when it was much cooler. Once you get up near the top, you can walk through and experience remainders of military installation type of fort buildings. So that was kind of cool. Also, we were able to spot and closely interact with some wild koala bears, which for Canadians, that's a pretty neat experience. And for Lori, that was one of the things that was on her bucket list before we arrived in Australia. So it was pretty cool that she was able to experience that. After that hot, sweaty hike, it was a nice break to be able to catch a quick uh, cab ride down to the beach and uh, grab a dip in the water. Uh, I think it was a protected area because of the sharks and the jellies, but that was pretty common in this area of Australia. Still, the water was like, the water was like bathtub warm, but it was still refreshing after the heat from the hike. One of the day trips we took was to a place called Air, which I share a name with. So for us, it was interesting, but it's probably a place that most people wouldn't choose as a tourist destination. Somewhere in my brain, I thought we would roll in there and receive a royal welcome, kind of like this. But in reality, when we rolled in, our welcome was more like this. After our expectations had tumbled back down to reality, it was still kind of cool to tour around this small town and see everything from the police station to the post office to the McDonald's to the bowling alley to the swimming pool with your name on it. So that was kind of cool. Unfortunately, I wasn't even able to get free french fries at McDonald's, but I guess you can't win them all. Top it all off, we blew a tire on our way out uh, and that was sort of the icing on the cake. What saved that day though was we met an extremely helpful, kind-hearted couple that came out and helped us out on the side of the road after many people just drove right by us. I think it was plus 35 in the shade. Anyway, thanks again you two. Uh, you basically turned around that day for us. After we spent our three weeks or so in Townsville, it was time again to jump on an airplane and fly into Brisbane, where we would do the second of our three house sits. We were going to take care of and, and be a presence in their house and more importantly, look after their dogs, Samson and Delilah. This was a delightful place that they had. It was kind of a little oasis in the middle of town. We were able to have a nice quiet place to work they had a pool that we could uh, swim in and get some refreshment. And because we were walking the dogs twice a day, this neighborhood had some huge trees just off of, uh, let's say, a block or two over from the house. So we would try to time it in the uh, twilight. We were able to watch flying foxes come in and feed off these trees, which, you know, for us as Canadians, yes, we have bats, but they're tiny compared to the flying foxes. So that was pretty cool. After this house sit was completed, it was time to take a little break, a holiday within the holiday for Lori and I. So we jumped on a bus and headed down to the Gold Coast, Surfer's Paradise. I think we stayed there for around a week or so, and uh, we just primarily goofed off. Pretty much every day, sometimes twice a day, we would uh, get into the waves and body surf as many of them as we could. We'd enjoy some time on the beach, catching some rays, but primarily, man, it was multiple hours a day every day in those waves <laughs> probably one of the highlights of the australian trip for me i really enjoyed that area and what we did there all that time in the water was fantastic i would definitely return there surfers paradise is a little bit more of a tourist orientated town where they've got big hotels and malls and they have different uh, restaurants and fast food places uh, lining the beach so it's quite an energetic vibe in this little town so if you're planning to visit this spot just know that it's not exactly out of the way. It has large towers of condos lining the streets, uh, but the beach is fantastic. So if you don't mind a busy type of atmosphere, it's an excellent location to enjoy a little bit of sort of urban beach life. Well, after our little holiday within a holiday, we returned again to Brisbane where we would do the third of our three house sits. This time we were taking care of a home and uh, a couple of Great Dane dogs, which were closer to horses than dogs really. They were massive. Nice dogs, 
good temperament. Again, this house sit came with a car, just as the other house sits did as well. So in addition to being able to use this car for everyday things like getting groceries, we were able to take a day here and there, or more like a half day, and see some of the local sites uh, in the area of Brisbane. So what we generally did was we would drive out of town and we would go to places like uh, the Sunshine Coast now, which is similar to the Gold Coast, but it's less developed. Still has very good beaches, and we were able to do some more body surfing there, which was enjoyable. On our way home from hanging out at the beach at the Sunshine Coast, we took a parallel highway back to Brisbane, where we were able to visit the Glass House Mountains. This was a pretty interesting spot with some majestic lookouts and some pretty cool looking mountains. So that was uh, definitely worth pulling off to go and experience. We wish we had more time in this spot. After this stop off in the Glasshouse Mountains, uh, we were kind of driving right by it anyway. So we stopped in at the Irwin Zoo, try to catch that, but they had just closed before we got there. Crikey! It seems like when it comes to Australia, we hear people say all the time that Oh, Australia has so much dangerous wildlife, you know, whether it be snakes or spiders, crocodiles, sharks, that it makes them scared to go. In our experience, this fear is generally overblown. Yes, all of these things do exist, but it's not like you're coming in contact or interacting with these things on a day-to-day -day basis. It's unlikely that you'll even see many of these. In comparison, Canada also has many dangerous things, ranging from bears, cougars, Trudeaus, black widow spiders, rattlesnakes. And again, thankfully, we here in Canada, we don't have to interact with any of these things generally on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's not as scary as it sounds. You know, it was the same thing when we lived in the jungles of Costa Rica and Panama, we were surrounded by and definitely in the territory of one of the most dangerous snakes in the world, the Fer de Lance. And yes, they were there and we experienced them along with venomous spiders, but it just wasn't a big enough factor to have us change plans and not experience all the positive things that went along with these locations. In a general sense, Australia has seasons that sort of are opposed or alternate from North America. So Let's say when the US and Canada is having its winter, Australia is having its summer. So that works out perfectly for someone that's looking to get away from a North American winter and warm up. So for example, most of the time, generally speaking, while we were there in three months, Australia was in and around that 30 degree range. It was humid in comparison, but of course we weren't complaining because the alternative was Northern Canada's winter. In a best of both worlds situation, you could split your time between, say, North America and, and Australia, so you could always be enjoying a summer type climate. One of the things we noticed and appreciated about Australia was the food, meaning the availability. Pretty much whatever you wanted or craved, you had it available there. So uh, all different kinds of restaurants from different uh, ethnicities and regions, whatever you have on your mind, you could just order up. The grocery stores had an excellent variety of dairy products, meat products, vegetables, fruits. Uh, the food availability and variety was quite excellent. I would probably say the food availability in Australia, in Queensland, where we were hanging out anyway, would be similar to that of Canada, uh, where both countries would have pretty much anything available that you could want. Another similarity correspondingly would be the cost of living. Australia, I would say, would be uh, expensive cost of living, globally speaking, even for a first world country, as is Canada. When you compare the cost of living of these two countries, Australia and Canada, for example, when you compare that to the United States, the United States would have a considerably lower cost of living, generally speaking, overall, depending on the state you're in. There were other similarities between Australia and Canada as well. You know, with the, both of the countries speak English, well, in Australia, they mostly speak English. Fair dinkum. Hey, you going, you big bloody beautiful bastards? Ah, you flaming galah. The general level of friendliness of the people. Both countries have colorful currencies that coincidentally are approximately equal valued. There's not a huge variance there. A couple of the significant differences that we noticed between, say, North America and Australia was first and foremost, Australians drive on the other side or the opposite side of the road than North Americans do. 
So that took a lot of getting used to. In fact, the whole three months we were there, I was still getting used to driving on the right side of the road or the wrong side of the road, depending on how you look at it. Nice thing about it is, is if you are on the wrong side or incorrect side of the road, the Australians will let you know. Another difference was that pretty much everywhere you went, every park or outdoor setting, Australia has provided these gas powered grills or barbecues. We really enjoyed them. We thought they were great. Did you just grill that chicken? I did. This was running around the yard this morning. <laughs> Looks amazing. In summary again, everybody, we feel like we barely even scratched the surface of this vast country of Australia in the three months that we spent there. It's amazing to me when people come in and out in a week or 10 days and they say, oh yeah, I've been to Australia. <laughs> Whereas I feel like I've barely even been there and I spent a quarter of a year. Like I said before, it would probably take me two years plus of constant exploring this massive country to even get an idea of what it's all about. I would uh, jump at the chance to go there again and I look forward to it if it ever happens. My name's Aaron, this is Plan Free. If you like what we're talking about, click the like button. Subscribe to our channel. Like I said before, it just takes a second, it's free, and it helps a lot. Heck, if you want to go the extra mile, subscribe your dog, your parakeet, your uncle, your grandpa and grandma. Just subscribe everyone. That's cool, man. You're cool. Cool, thanks. Okay, 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 cool, 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 no doubt. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon in the next video. Bye for now.